Hey guys, so today we'll be discussing on SQL injection. And as you can see over here, we have a login page. So in most web application, say for example, I've already launched Metasploitable 2, and we click on the DVWA, and we go to SQL injection. So most of the time, there will be a web form where you can insert uh, your username or in order to log in or username and password in order to log in. So most of the time, this web form is going to be subjected to SQL injection. And so how does, how does SQL injection work? If you're new to SQL injection, today I'm really going to run through with you on a deep level about how our web applications are structured, how are they designed, how are they programmed, and what is it that allows a SQL query to be, to bypass certain security mechanisms. So let's take a look over here and we have a standard login page. It can be JSP, it can be PHP or anything. And you see that most of the time there is a form and there is an action, which is login and a method, which is get. And of course there is a name and usually there's a password for people to log into. So it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what is the form is, but the whole idea is that there is a form and a uh, login page where we can insert query or we can insert value which will then interact from the web application server to the database and from this particular login web page we could let's say in java you usually go to a to a servlet and what happened is that as you can see over here there is a boolean login check so it's actually talking to the application server asking to check the login of the name and the password so going back you see that there is one, there's two fields declared, one as the name and one as a password, and then you'll be thrown over to the servlet, which will then troll the, the asking for a function from the application server. So going forward, moving forward to the Java bin, we can see that there is a function called login, which takes in a string username and a string password. And over here, you see there's a query. You see that this is a SQL statement where it actually queries the database. It could be a SQL server. It could be a Microsoft SQL server. It could be uh, maybe some other uh, more popular SQL servers like NoSQL, etc. So it doesn't matter what it is, but it's going, the application server is going to query the database for information. And this, for this case, it's going to ask if the username or the password coincide properly with the value in a database table. And Going forward, we see that what's going to happen is most of the time, it's the the statement being sent from the application server to the database server is going to look like this. Select P, which is the statement coming in from the bean over here. And what is the, what, what is the P, right? So it's going to be the customer information that is supplied from the username and password. So from customer P again. So the whole goal is what can we do with this particular query? What can we replace so that in the end we bypass the intended function of this query? So over here, what's gonna usually what's gonna happen is that many hackers are going to put a, a single quote to end this particular query statement and then they will put or one equal one. And or one equal one will make this statement as always true. And what happens is that there's going to be different kind of responses from the database. And we're going to see a live example, a live demonstration of how it works. So looking over here, we have Metasploitable 2 running. And I'm going to exit, uh, exit my SQL. So I'm going to check the IP address of this particular virtual machine. And we can see this uh, virtual machine as 192.168.1.18. And we can, of course, log into the SQL server as a, as a root user. So for Metasploitable 2, is, it has a list of all the vulnerabilities uh, within, a, within a server that you can try to penetrate against. So now we are logged into the SQL server. And over onto the Firefox end. I'm going to go over to the IP address of this particular virtual machine on port 80. And we see there's a, there's a bunch of uh, different services available where you can actually play around uh, trying out some of the hacking techniques. So I'm going to go to DVWA. 
And over here, uh, this is the dem vulnerable web application. And we can go to SQL injection. And on the left side of the screen, you can see I'm running SQL inject me that is developed by Security Compass. So this is a really, really powerful Firefox add-on that can help us automate a lot of SQL injection. And we see that over here, they identify the form as a submit form. And there is a one value called ID. And we can change the value to any of this particular already uh, predefined value that we can add in to try to test against the form. So one of the value I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put in, remember what we saw on the uh, on Notepad Plus is that we we saw how we could actually bypass the the particular SQL query. So I'm going to select this one single quote or one equal one. Okay. And I'm going to check the box. So I'm going to click submit. And you realize that the web application server actually returned me the whole list of the entire table of this particular column of this particular table and we can actually check against the mysql server so we can say um show databases so we can see all the list of databases they're running in mysql and we can say use dvwa so we'll use this particular database because we want to check if we're able to we actually manage to successfully enter to get all the details from this particular table so we're gonna say show tables and we see that there's a guest book as a and a users table so what we can see from the web application form over here is, is asking for user id so chances are it should be using the users table so we can do all uh, select all from users this will help us query and show us all the value within the users table. And well, you see from here, we have the admin, we have Brown, we have me, we have Picasso, and we have Smith. So this means that after inputting this SQL injection, we actually manage to get all the information that we need. And of course, not only can we use a uh, a tool like SQL Inject Me. There's also another tool called Burp Suite where we can actually do a lot of automated attacks. And again, you can download uh, one of the Firefox add-on called Foxy Proxy. And right now I'm using a proxy server. And basically the proxy server points to the Burp Suite that I'm running. So double clicking here, you can see that I'm pointing to myself, 127.0.1. And I click OK, I click Close. So instead, what, what's going to happen is I'm going to go over here to Burp Suite Professional and I'm going to go to Proxy, Intercept, and I'm going to click Intercept on. So this will intercept all the web data that we're going to be pushing over into the forms. And this allows us to instead replicate what we are submitting through the form and we can do a lot of all kinds of testing through this very, very useful tool. So I click submit. So there's no value this time around. And it got intercepted by, by Burp Suite. So we can see what is being thrown over to the web application server. And all you have to do is just right click and send this information to intruder. And once we send information to intruder, you go to the intruder tab. And we can see that there's a target here, 192.168.1.18, which is the target IP address of the virtual machine. And we can go to positions. So over here, these are the, in the dollar sign, these are the dollar signs, which are the value that you want to change. You want to change your other preloaded value where you can do your automated attacks. So I'm going to clear this. And for the submit case, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to clear it as well. And the only thing that I'm going to use is the ID section. So the ID is going to be the one where we will be playing with the different variables, playing with different kind of uh, SQL injection strings. And go, we go over to payloads. And on payload, you see we have a, we have a bunch of uh, different options that are already come preset by Perp Suite Professional. So I'm going to select the fuzzing. I'm going to select the, hang on a second. Yep. I'm going to select the fuzzing SQL injection. And from here, I'm going to go back to options. So you can leave options as the, as a predefined set of options that's already available. 
and then I'm just gonna go to the top tab intruder and I'm just gonna click start attack and so what happens is that it's gonna run all the payload against the farm and what's what's most important to us as a let's say you're a penetration tester is we want to see what's the response coming from each and every of the payload so on the first I, I did the uh, I sort by the length of the response so for the first one we see anything single code or x equal x so I click on this I can see exactly what I sent to the application server and the parameters the haters and most importantly is what about the response what is the response coming back from the application server so clicking on a response I can see of course this is the source code that they came back instead I want to use the render option so the render option help us it's like a web browser helping us see what are the what is the response coming back so it's more human readable so again looking down we see wow again you know this SQL injection string actually work and we got back all the table the table of all the information that we need again these are really important ways we need tools to help us automate many of these penetration tests against many of these web application servers